So in the quiet of the Sabbath evening, we rest as people of the kingdom. We rest from the labors of our days. We rest from the weight of the things of life. We rest from those things that have caused us struggle or consternation or worry or anxiety. We rest before the Lord on this Advent evening, knowing that in Him, this kind and gracious Lord that we belong to, is a rest that is not only perfect, but it is one that gives us assurance and rejoicing and comfort and peace. On this Advent evening, we step away from the day we've just lived through. With all that contained, all the good parts and the parts that weren't so good, the parts of this day that, that caused us to reach and those that were easy for us, we step away from all of that this evening and in the presence of this God who, is, who has created us and then recreated us in His Son, who has claimed us to be His own, and has called us here tonight because He loves us so much. Tonight in His presence we rest. It's one of the things that we pray for. In fact, over and over again, in our worship and at our dinner tables, Christians for generations have been praying for the same thing. We pray, come Lord Jesus, season in and season out, in the falls and the springs of our lives and the summers and the winters of our lives as people of the kingdom, we pray, come Lord Jesus. And then we do something that is really, you'll hear tonight, something that is really remarkable. We simply wait. We pray, come Lord Jesus, and then we, we settle in as people of faith to the regularness of our lives, and, and we just simply wait. We pray, come Lord Jesus. And we do so as people of the kingdom in this remarkable and really wondrous context. We do in the context, in the reality that as we pray for it, our faith, in a lot of ways, in great big ways, in small ways, is really about waiting. Because, loved ones, it is, it is so much about what is going to be as much as what is. You and I, we pass the seasons of our lives as, as, as all people do, but not as all people do. We do so in a different way. As people of the kingdom, we do so in faith. We pray, come Lord Jesus. And then we wait. The days pass with all that the days contain. Some of it really, really joyful and wondrous. Some of it really trying for us and stretching in ways that we don't anticipate or don't necessarily want. We, we pray, come Lord Jesus. And a lot about our faith, a lot about our faith is a waiting game. So for example, loved ones, today, tonight, in this place, we believe that we belong, because of Jesus, we belong to the kingdom. Every one of us here tonight, we are the recreated, redeemed people of the kingdom. Ones who have been covered by the blood and made whole again. Ones who have had the very essence of the Son of God planted inside of us, the resurrected Son of God, so that inside of you and me there's a life growing up. We believe today, today by His grace and because of His amazing love, we belong. We also believe that in this same Jesus, the best for us is yet to come. That though today, parts of today, some of today in your life and mine is really wonderful. No matter how good this is, it pales in comparison to what we believe in Jesus for us is yet to come. But obviously as we gather here tonight on this last day of November, this Advent evening, in the quiet of the place before the, before the Heavenly Father we belong to, we know it's not here yet. Here's the thing. We don't know how long it's going to be. The promises that we heard from the scripture tonight that echo in our hearts and our minds as, as believers, as people who have been grasped by grace and made different whole by the love of Jesus, we, we anticipate, we know what's coming. But we don't know how long. And so... And so we wait, us beloved ones of the Father, us children. But listen to this, loved ones. This waiting that you and I are doing now, 
We need to know that God intends it to be an exercise of our faith. This is how it works. Listen, we cling to what we believe and hope lies ahead. That's at the very core of who we are as Christians. With these eyes, we can only see this, but with the eyes of our hearts, we're always looking beyond the horizon where the clouds part, where God dwells, where eternity shines with our hearts, with our lives. We are, we're reaching for and longing for and anticipating and listening to the word and having joy in the hope. We're reaching beyond the horizon. It is part of our character, who we are as people of the kingdom. And in that reaching, as we cling to this, we're doing so, listen to this, we're doing so with nothing more than God's word of promise. We don't have a shred of evidence. We can't prove that it's out there. But as people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, whom he has not only claimed, but indwelt by his spirit, Christians, we are people who we take God at his word when Jesus says to us, I'm coming back, I'm going to come again. I'm going to come in glory. I'm coming for you. I'm coming because I have a place for you and because I love you with my heart. I'm coming and what I'm going to give you, what I'm going to bring you into, will be something so far beyond what you have even begun to imagine. Perfect, perfect in every way. But you know, all we, all we have is his word. And so this is the character of the people of the kingdom. In faith, we take him at his word. And by his power, listen to it. By his power, we wait. God said, and because he said, we believe it will be so. God spoke the word through his son. And because he spoke the word, we believe, as Christians, we believe it will be so. But there is, there is this tension in our lives because we're doing all of that by faith. This waiting. Just waiting. That's not all, however, loved ones. Listen. In the divine economy, we are told that in the divine economy, those who wait for Jesus are given a special blessing by the Father. We're told that the children who wait for the Savior to come are given strength. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, Isaiah writes. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah is talking about a strength, loved ones, that is absolutely supernatural. It makes this waiting that you and I do as Christians not only possible, but fruitful. When I was about your age, a little younger, a little older, man, Christmas couldn't come quick enough. Holy cow, an advent was like forever. <laughs> we had this calendar in our house when I got a little older. I don't know if my mother made it or one of my aunts, but it was a calendar. You've probably seen one like it. It was a calendar that had little pockets for each day, and inside one of the pockets was this little, well, Mom called it a church mouse. And so for the 31 days of December, or however long Advent was going to last, one of us was given, was given the glorious task when we come home from school or the first thing on Saturday morning or when we came home from church on Sunday, one of us was given the glorious task of moving the little church mouse from one day to the next. It was the first. And then it was the second. And holy cow, then it was the third. And then it was a fourth. You get my drift. Oh man, the waiting was. Whew. And my mom would always say, It'll get here. <laughs> well, yeah, but. No, it'll get here. <laughs> I remember my sister Muriel one year saying, Let's have Christmas on the 15th. <laughs> 
So let's just have Christmas on the 15th. My dad would shake his head, look at us sideways, and say, Hold the mouse. <laughs> and then it would come. Jesus would be born again. There would be the lights on the trees and the gifts under the trees and the singing of Silent Night and the reading of the Christmas story. And, and listen to me, and it was oh so sweet in part because it didn't come overnight. But because in his graceful way, God had us wait for Christmas to come. Listen to me tonight. In the same wondrous, supernatural way. We are waiting for the return of Jesus. He has promised to come. He has told us that when he comes, it will be glorious for us as his children. And he has bid us until he comes, listen, to wait. And then not left us there, but said, because you are my children, because I love you so much, because what I have in store for you is so glorious, I'm not simply going to say to you, child, you need to wait. I'm going to give you the strength to do so. Season in and season out. And so tonight again, we, we do it again. Like we did yesterday and probably will tomorrow. We pray for the return of our Savior, for the fullness of completeness to come, for the dawning of eternity. Tonight, loved ones, we pray, come Lord Jesus, and we wait. On this Advent evening, this is the teaching of the Lord. If you would rise, please.